Hallelujah. Come on in life. Come on, let's worship the Lord right now. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. We give you all the praise, glory, and honor right now in the mighty name of Jesus, Father. For you are the God of the breakthrough. Hallelujah, Jesus. We worship you right now in spirit and in truth. Hallelujah, Jesus. We give you praise, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We're praying for miracles, signs, and wonders, Father. We're praying for greater in our lives, Father. Greater in our finances, Father. Greater for New Life Tabernacle as a whole right now. In the mighty name of Jesus. For your name is great, Father. You're worthy, Lord, and worthy to be praised. We thank you, Jesus. Glory, hallelujah, Lord. Come on, let's worship him today, church. Hallelujah, Father. Let's give him all the praise, all the glory, all the honor. We love you today, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We love you, Lord, yes. Hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah to your name, Jesus, Father, right now. We worship you not because of what you've done, but because of who you are. And we thank you, Jesus. Come on. Clench your hands together, church. Hey. Come on, clap your hands, church. Hey. Hallelujah, Jesus.
because you are the God of the great God. Hallelujah. You're a God of greater things, God of greater miracles, signs, and wonders. Hallelujah. Yes, hallelujah, Jesus. Clap your hands, church. We love you, Jesus, right now for everything you've done. All the great works you're going to do for new life right now. Hallelujah. We praise you, Lord. We thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Listen. Thank you, Lord. We praise you, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, let's worship him right now, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We love you, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, yes. We worship you, Lord. Yes. There's only one name. There is only one name with power to save. There is only one day. There is only one day. Hallelujah. There is only one day. There is only one day. The power to sing. The power to sing. The power to sing. The power to sing. Hallelujah. All of us can give your voice right now and say, Say, our God. Our God. He's champion. Church say, they are
decorate the room with your worship right now. Because we love you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We love you, Lord. Say, God, you reign. You reign over our lives, Father. Over our family. Over our situation, church. Lord, we love you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah. If you take a look at the monitor, there's some in need of a healing on tonight. Some have a special need. And some in need of salvation. Our God is a champion. How many of you know what I'm talking about tonight? Hallelujah. And if you have a need in your heart tonight, that only God can supply. Let's take it before the throne on tonight. Church, help me go before the throne of grace on tonight. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for your goodness, oh God. Thank you for your mercy, oh God. Thank you for your grace, Lord Jesus, oh God. Lord, we've come to the potter's house tonight, God. You are the potter, God. 
And we are the clay, Lord Jesus, oh God. Lord, mold us and shape us on tonight, Lord, with your word, Lord Jesus, oh God. Lord David said, create in me a clean heart, oh God, and renew a right spirit within me, Lord Jesus. Lord, we need you, oh God, on tonight, Lord Jesus, oh God. Lord, there are some in need of a healing on tonight, Lord God. Lord, we know you have the power, Lord Jesus, oh God, to heal on tonight, God. You have the power to save, oh God. You have the power to deliver on tonight. Lord God, there are some have a special need on tonight, God, that only you can supply, Lord Jesus. Lord, we came to magnify the name of Jesus on tonight, God. You said if I be lifted up from the earth, God, I would draw all men unto me, Lord God. Lord, we came to magnify your holy name on tonight, Lord Jesus, oh God. Lord, never will a rock cry out in my place on tonight, God. You are worthy of all the praise on tonight, God. Lord, we come to lift up holy hands on tonight, Lord Jesus, oh God. And we come to say thank you, Lord Jesus, oh God, for your goodness, oh God. Lord, you've been better to us tonight, God, than we've been to ourselves, Lord Jesus, oh God. Lord, thank you for your holy angels, oh God, that are in your presence tonight, Lord Jesus, oh God. Lord, as we call upon the name of Jesus on tonight, God, there are some that have no hope on tonight, God. There are some that are heading to the lake of fire on tonight, Lord Jesus, oh God. Lord, will you intervene, oh God, right now, Jesus, oh God. Touch their hearts, oh mighty God. Touch their minds on tonight, Lord Jesus, oh God. There are some that have wandered away from truth, Lord Jesus, oh God. Lord, will you draw them back in, oh God, before time runs out, Lord Jesus. Lord God, we call upon your name, God, because you're able, oh God, to do exceedingly, oh God, and abundantly more than we can ask or even think, Lord Jesus. And we come to say thank you, Lord Jesus, oh God. Lord, we come to praise your name on tonight, God. Lord, will you touch the speaker on tonight, Lord Jesus, oh God. Give them a word for the hour, O oh God, that we will know, God, that we have stood in your presence on tonight, God. Lord God, let miracles, signs, and wonders begin to take place on tonight, God. Move by your spirit on tonight, God. And Lord, we love you on tonight, Jesus. And Lord, we give your name the glory, the honor, and the praise, God, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Somebody clap your hands unto the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And you may be seated if you can. Welcome to the house of the Lord on our midweek service. On behalf of our pastor, Pastor Collins, and our bishop, Bishop Davey, and the New Life family, we want to welcome all of our first, second, and third time visitors to the house of God on tonight. Can we give them a round of applause tonight? Glad you pressed your way on out. Those that really want to be saved come to church on Wednesday night. How many of you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> Hallelujah. I just have a few announcements. The Garden Ministry has 200 pots ready for individual purchase. We're asking that you purchase 20 pots at $7.50 each, or you may split your order. Sponsorships are also available. Please visit the Fellowship Hall after service to sign up to volunteer or purchase vegetables. Let's celebrate two years of ministry with NLT at Sarasota this Friday at 7 p.m. Check the app for the location. Let's continue to raise the standard and reach our community. Join the outreach team this Saturday at 10 a.m. Tonight is the final night to register for the Elevate training taking place this Saturday Breakfast will be served from 8 a.m. to 8.40 a.m. So please be on time. Register tonight via the NLT app or website for more information. Contact Minister Ann Pierre at apierre at yournlt.com. Our Kingdom Kids morning service will go live this coming Sunday, April 14th at 11 a.m. in the FLC. There will be no wide move second Sunday enrichment this Sunday. Their next enrichment class will be fourth Sunday in between service. And here are tonight's breakout classes. In the education wing, kids ages 3 through 12, youth ages 13 through 18, and hyphen ages 19 through 30. And the class with you and your money. Also in the fellowship hall, Christian living discipleship class the missile for all classes is at offering time. And lastly, our nursery is open tonight 
from ages six months to two years old. And that concludes all of the announcements for tonight. And it's offering time. Who's ready to be blessed? As we prepare our offering, all cash givers may remain at their seats as the usher pass the buckets through the rows. Although the giving stations are available for your use, you're strongly encouraged to give via the NLT app. Scan the QR code on the screen with your camera to quickly access the online giving page. Please note, it is important that you give through your account on the app to ensure your giving is accurately tracked. Also, it's not necessary to submit a tithing envelope when you're using the app to give. I said I wasn't going to give no testimony because I don't want people to get all mad with me, but I got another testimony. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> when you give with your right hand, God is going to bless you in your left hand, I'm telling you. Trust what I say. <laughs> I went out of town and I came back and I went and opened my mailbox. <laughs> And there was a check with my name from some bank. I don't even know what bank it was. <laughs> and, and not only that, one of my clients that I ain't seen in months, he called me and said, I'm, I'm coming to your house. And he blessed me when he came. And so when you give with your right hand, watch out for the ram in the bush that's coming on the left hand. If you believe the word of God, God can't lie with his word. It's yea and amen with God's word. If you have an offering on tonight, let's lift them to heaven on tonight and ask God to bless every giver on tonight. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for your goodness, God. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your grace, God. Thank you that you're a faithful God. Lord, you're never forsaken us, oh God. Lord, you're on time, God. Lord, we thank you, Lord God. The cattle on a thousand hills belong to you, Lord God. Lord, the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof, oh God. The world and they that dwell therein, Lord God. Lord, we thank you right now, God. You said, cast your bread upon the waters, oh God. And many days after, God, Lord, it will come back to us, Lord. We thank you, Lord God, for being a faithful God on tonight. Lord, bless every giver on tonight, Lord Jesus, oh God. We're casting our bread right now, God. And we ask that you bless every giver, God. Some 50, 60, 100 fold, God. Even a million fold, God. Lord, and I pray you get the glory, God, out of our faithfulness, of God, with our tithing and in our offering, oh God. And Lord, we'll be careful to praise you and give you all of the glory, God. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Let's give unto the Lord. And we have another selection.
Clap your hands on to the Lord, everybody. Amen, amen. Would you do me a favor and just walk around and shake at least four or five hands? Just tell them you're glad to see them in the house of the Lord tonight. Greet somebody in the precious name of Jesus. Welcome them to the house of the Lord God. Thank God for them. Amen. Time to connect with your brothers and sisters. Thank God for this wonderful praise team. Thank you, Brother Lorenzo, for leading us in that song. Amen. God bless them. God bless them. God bless them. God bless them. If you are supposed to be in one of the uh, Christian living classes, uh, please make your way to that class now. Those elective classes are taking place, uh, whether in the education wing or over in the fellowship hall. So those who are supposed to be in Christian living, please, please make your way to Christian living. That's important that you get through those courses um, because that's what qualifies you to move to the next level. And we want you to move to the next level. We want you to be involved in ministry. Amen. So please plan for that. Also, let me make a special mention about Elevate. We ought to thank God for that team that puts Elevate together. <laughs> Elevate is our training program on uh, Saturdays, this Saturday, April 13th. It will be a special training here that's designed to give you tools to equip you to be successful in life, to be successful in ministry. Uh, we have uh, individuals who are proficient in various areas, and, and they will be presenting, and it's absolutely free to the church. Now, it's, it's not free because somebody's paying for it. Uh, we're, we're putting the resources into it from the church side, but it's free to uh, the membership for you to come and be a part of that. Uh, breakfast will be served after prayer, and then right after that breakfast, then we go into the training. And so please, please come. And that's also a special push for you to be at prayer at 6 o'clock on Saturday. So there's 6 a.m. prayer. Uh, how many are blessed when you come to prayer? How many know when you come to prayer, it's a blessing? Amen. So, so come on and be a part of that. And then just go straight from the prayer into the Elevate training. It will, it will get, get you to the next level. It will help you. Uh, become better and more proficient at what you do. So we want you to be a part of that, all right? Let's stand to our feet at this time. Um, we thank God for this man of God who's going to be sharing the word of the Lord with us. Always leaves us with something to contemplate. We're dealing with spiritual gifts, amen, and the supernatural. And thank God for Minister Lemuel Harris as he comes to speak to us from the word of the Lord. Lord, where's Laura New Life? All right, good to see everyone here tonight. I'm glad that you're here. I'm glad I'm here, and I'm grateful to God for both. Let's get into the word of the Lord tonight. Uh, tonight, we are continuing our lessons on spiritual gifting. In particular, tonight, we're looking at Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12, and we'll look at um, verses 3 through 8. Um, I really wanted to read all of Romans chapter 12, but time probably forbid me from getting into all of it, I will just uh, mention what it's about overall as it relates to our topic tonight. But Romans chapter 12, verses 3 through 8 will be our lesson text, and then we'll move on from there. Thank God for our leadership here. I'm so grateful for uh, leadership that's willing to sacrifice and allow God to use them. Amen. It's not easy. Amen. It's not easy, but we're grateful for those that have sacrificed so that we can also be here. Appreciate that. Amen. Let's go to Romans chapter 12, verse 3 through 8. The word of the Lord reads, For I say through the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. For as we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office, so we being many are one body in Christ, and every one member of one another. Verse 6, having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, whether prophecy, let us prophesy according to the proportion of faith, our ministry, let us wait on our ministering, or he that teacheth on teaching, or he that exhorteth on exhortation, he that giveth, let him do it with simplicity, he that ruleth with diligence, he that sheweth mercy with cheerfulness. Amen. So we're going to talk more extensively on these particular gifts um, tonight, and I believe God will bless us. I thank God for the gifts of the Spirit. Amen. God blesses us with gifts. 
primarily to be a blessing to one another. So we're going to talk about them a little bit more tonight. Let's go to God in prayer. Lord, thank you for your grace and mercy toward us that you've given us, Lord God, loving us so much that you would gift us with, oh God, gifts that will allow us to edify one another, oh God, that the church might, might be established, it might be built, it might be encouraged that we might make it all the way. We're grateful, oh God, for equipping us, oh God, to make it to heaven. It is our heart's desire to make it to heaven, oh God, and you've done so much, oh God, to give us the opportunity to go, oh God. Help us, oh God, tonight to embrace all that you've given us, oh God, and to use everything that you've given us to overcome this world and the enemy of this world, and that your name might be glorified and we might be edified. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you for standing. You may be seated. Amen. I will tell you, well, maybe I'll tell you when we get closer to that. But as I always uh, comment on Wednesday nights, um, I like to slow down and teach. I just, I just really enjoy uh, the, the idea of, of really delving into the Word of God to get a complete understanding of what God wants from me. And so tonight, we're going to do that quite a bit here uh, with the gifts of the Spirit. So if we go uh, to that first slide, our individual perspective, um, then we'll get into uh, what this is all about. So hopefully you can see that. First, let's consider this. We each have one of these gifts as our primary motivation uh, and ministry, although we can have secondary motivational gifts. So these particular gifts, seven gifts that we read about, here um, are sometimes called motivation gifts or serving gifts, and we're going to talk about how we can serve in the church. Uh, there's an individual perspective. There's also a church, a collective perspective on how we should view each one of these gifts. And of course, the first thing, as I mentioned here, that we ought to look at for ourselves and take into consideration is that really our gifts uh, sometimes show up in us uh, because of there's some personality traits that we have that God has given us. Um, and sometimes we can see uh, individuals' gifts operating just because of how they are, their personality. And sometimes uh, maybe, the, you know, you almost know that that's one gift may not be a particular individual's gift because of their personality traits. So in this, um, our, our gifts, uh, they, they kind of motivate us. They move us. Um, and it's a part of who we are. Secondly, uh, we must use them according to the grace we've been given in faith and with sound judgment. So really, the gifts are all about other people. And you have to be considerate of that. You have to be mindful of that. And we have to know that we, we use our gifts based on how God gives it to us. One of the uh, texts that we read earlier, it says that God has given every man the measure of faith. That means not everybody has the same level of faith in general. Sometimes you're frustrated with people because God has gifted you to be able to see things in a particular way, and other people don't have that gift, and so they're stressed about something that you're not stressed about. You're, you're saying, I know it can get done. I know God can have us do it, and they're thinking, man, I just, maybe, maybe not. I'm hoping. I believe God, but. So you have to recognize that God has given you a particular level of faith regarding a, a specific thing. Whereas maybe that's not true for everybody else in general. And so you have to be patient one with another. And be grateful, on the other hand, that somebody has maybe more faith in an area that maybe you, don't, you lack faith in. So we're, we're a body. We balance one another out. Not all of us have the same gifts. And thank God not all of us or any of us have all of the gifts. Can you imagine having every gift and everybody's blowing up your phone? I wouldn't want all of the gifts. It's nice to say, I don't know. And it's nice to say, I can't help you. That way you leave me alone and go bother brother such and such because he's gifted. Go deal with him. But, but as for me, you know, it sounds good. Well, you know, I can do this and I can do that. Only pride would, would make somebody want all of the gifts so everybody comes to them. Well, I'm not prideful. At least I don't think, for, think so. I do a pretty good job at not being prideful. I'm just kidding. <laughs> but, but. We don't really want all of the gifts. I want to know that I need you, as Pastor Collins mentioned last week, and you need me, you know? And I definitely need you, and it's better off that you have uh, differing gifts among us. And I may have one or two or something like that, but I can lean on you. It makes me rely on you. It makes me desire you to be around if I have a true understanding of the gifts of the Spirit. And so I have my own, and you have yours, and we work together to build one another up. So I have to use... Uh, judgment, sound judgment in using the gifts. And we'll talk a little bit about that regarding each one. 
Furthermore, we should be secure in our gifts. We should be secure in our gifts. I believe part of what this month is about is encouraging us to actually use our gifts, to identify our gifts and then use the gifts. It's not, what good would it do if you are multimillion and somebody gives you plenty of money, but you don't have either access to the bank account or you just don't know the code or whatever to get into the bank account or you just don't know it's there. Or you refuse to use it for whatever reason. It wouldn't make any sense. You'll still live uh, underneath the, uh, uh, your ability to live a bit, a bit higher and to be a blessing to others simply because you aren't unlocking uh, the blessing that has been given to you. Same with our spiritual gifts. Many of us sit down on our spiritual gifts. We sit down on our spiritual gifts. And I understand sometimes it's uncomfortable as you learn your gift. Um, it's not so much always that you automatically know what your gift is. You know God is telling you to use it at that particular time. There's areas that we're less, you know, comfortable um, engaging ourselves in because we don't know if it's going to work. So it takes faith for all of our gifts to work. But we have to walk in faith and not by sight. We have to know, hey, look, God has given me this gift, and I need to practice it. So here's the thing. I'm going to give you this tip real quick. The way you improve on your spiritual gifting or operating in your gift is really practice. And here's how practice works. Sometimes you're right and sometimes you're wrong. You say, well, no, if I'm in the Holy Ghost, well, I'm human too. So God is perfect, but I'm not. You see? So I might be wrong. But over time, we begin to associate maybe the feeling that we get, the, 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 the voice that we kind of hear at that moment with the times in which we were accurate. And so we'll say, you know what? I know this time that this is God. Maybe so, another time it was, it was my flesh. I was in the gym yesterday, and um, I was walking by, and there's a lady that um, works out in the gym, and she's, she has, she's severely impaired in terms of her ability to see. And um, it, it was on my heart. It's like, man, I sure wish she was healed. And I walked past her, and in my head I said, just wanted to walk by and say, be healed, and boom, she'll be healed. Now, did you think I did it? No. I did, because I know all y'all spiritual. Well, you should have did it. Well, here's the thing. Okay? So here's this guy. Touch some woman he doesn't know in the gym. And then you all are hearing something on the news about Brother Lim touching some woman in the gym. You see how y'all laughing? And y'all spiritual. So, you know, I'm taking that into consideration. And, you know, then I got to explain to everybody. I was like, baby, she's not even my type. I mean, uh, But so, I, and then what I'm gonna say, well, I, well what, what were you doing touching that woman? I was trying to heal her. Mm -hmm. You see how spiritual y'all got? That's just how spiritual I was. So I said, Lord, here's what I asked the Lord. I said, Lord, help my unbelief. Give me the ability to know, I know this is the time, this is the moment, and I need to do it. Because I've, I've, uh, God has blessed me in those areas where uh, there's times in my life I have prayed for people and God moved on them. It was something I felt at that moment. I can't say I felt that right now. It was more compassion, but it wasn't necessarily that move. But I want to be able to operate in the gift of God whereby I could be in, in a strange place with strangers and boom, it just happens because God said so. Or because, watch this, even better than that, I just know what I got. One place, uh, it's not in my notes, but yeah, I'm going to move quickly. But there is one place in Scripture where Peter and John were on their way to the temple. And there was a guy sitting there, and he's asking for money. He's asking for alms, alms for the poor. Peter looks at him and says, silver and gold have I none. But watch what he says. He says, such as I have, give unto you. A couple of things he's implying. He knows what he has. He knows it. He, he didn't have to go and pray. He's on his way to prayer. So he didn't have to go pray about it. He didn't fast about it. He didn't do anything, anything like that. Then all of the people around him saw the lame man get up. Bible says he grabbed his hand, the lame man leaped up. Everybody was astonished. They were amazed. Peter's response to them was this, and I'm paraphrasing. He says, what y'all so surprised about? He says, I mean, this isn't a big deal. So to Peter, he wasn't like, he you know, he wasn't jumping. He wasn't none of that. He just was like, this is how it's supposed to work in the church. What did you expect to happen? That's how we ought to be walking in the Holy Ghost. We need to be just going somewhere. Oh, yeah, that's supposed to work like that. That's supposed to work like that. 
So that means I got to get out of my own way or get out of my own carnality and be in a place where, look, I just know that this thing, these things happen. So all of the spiritual gifts that we talk about here uh, this month is something that is normal in the church. We call them, it's supernatural, but to God, it's natural. To us, it's supernatural, but God is like, that's easy. I do that every day, all the time. I, I, I don't even get up to do that. And he said, you're my children. At some point, we need to be able to just say, well, that's just normal. That's how it works in the church. It should be amazing to the world, but natural to us. And then gifts match our core motivation, which makes you light up, which also match your calling in area of ministry. I was talking to someone earlier today about individuals here in the church that I noticed at some point in time and how they're so gifted for the particular job that they're in. And they have certain characteristics or personality traits that differ from mine, and so is their gift. Uh, you know, some people, you know, you know, operate just very differently than me. I'm like, man, come on, let's go, let's do it like this. But they're very different than I am. Uh, but their personality is necessary for whatever the gifting that God has given them, okay? So some people are just going to be more patient, and some people are going to be like, man, let's just go. Let's not even worry about that thing. And that other person, no, we need to wait, and we need to talk about it, and we need to do this, and we need to do that. But that's going to build that person up at that moment. And I might not be good at that. There's some folk in here. I'm just not you. And you man, Brother Lim, you just carnal. Well, no, I'm not carnal. I'm just not gifted like you. And so your gift is going to make you excited about the particular thing that you're involved in, especially when you begin to use your gift. And then from the body's perspective, we need to be able to respect each other's giftings. We need to recognize that all of the giftings in the church are important. The next slide. Each of the seven gifts I'm going to go over are necessary for a healthy church. You really don't want to have any one of the gifts absent from the church. You want all of the gifts operating in the church. It's necessary. God's not going to give us anything extra and over and above that we don't need for growth. If he gave it to us, we need it. And I want to see all of the gifts in operation in the church. They must be ubiquitous. That means they have to be something that's just all over the place. You know, it's not that it's just maybe one or two people in the church and a couple of people operating in the spiritual gifts. That will wear folk out. Um, and then we also have to allow for the expression of these gifts. And I thank God for the teaching that we have because it is encouraging us to use the gift. You'll be amazed how some people may have a gift, but they sit back and they wonder, can I do this and can I do that? Man, you start operating in the gifts, nobody's going to be mad at you. Nobody around here is going to be mad at you. As long as you do it with the right spirit, because that's important, which is what uh, the whole text in uh, Romans chapter 12 really is about, the spirit of an individual, doing things with love, doing things in unity, doing things in such a way that it's edifying others and not glorifying ourselves. That's really what the whole context of Romans chapter 12 is about. And in there is inserted these servicing gifts. And so we ought to understand that surrounding all of the gifts in which I'm going to be talking about in more detail has to be a spirit of servanthood, a spirit of love, and a spirit of unity. I'm not trying to show myself to be super spiritual. Generally, if you're doing that, you're not super spiritual. If you're trying to show yourself to be super spiritual, you're probably not super spiritual. You need to go back to God and ask him to humble you because even he humbled himself to the death of the cross, and he's God. And so we're going to be more like God. Humility is going to be a trait in which we display. And then no one gift is dominant over the others. No one gift. Some people want to be certain stuff. Oh, I want to be that. For what? Well, you know, because, you know, you know, having profit on my big profit. I mean, you might want to go back and read the Old Testament prophet stuff. I don't look at any of them guys and say, boy, if I could be Ezekiel. For all y'all who don't know what I'm talking about, go read. Well, yeah, go read it. I mean, Ezekiel had to do some stuff. He had to eat dung. Yeah, you see how you don't want to be a prophet anymore? Oh, no, I'm good. You know, God told me, eat human dung. He said, Lord, now, come on now. You're going a little too far. The Lord said, okay, fine. I'll be merciful. Go eat some horse dung. What? You see? He had to sleep on one side all year long. He had to do all kind of weird stuff. I'm like, man, <laughs> Lord, bless him. So that's uh, that Jeremiah was put into uh, a, a pit, and nobody even listened. He had zero converts. None. Not a zilch. Neil. Not even one. Man. Depending on where you're from. Not one convert. And so, 
you know, yeah. So a lot of people just want a title, and that title really doesn't mean anything if the heart one isn't there. And, of course, if the anointing isn't there, God has to give you these gifts. So you don't have to go and try to prove that you're something. Let God do it through you. People will recognize the gift that God has put there and give God the glory. Because ultimately, all of these gifts, as much as they are to edify the church, they're designed to give God the glory. They're to turn the hearts of people to God and not to ourselves. And then the last thing, then the absence of even one of the gifts can cripple the church. Even one gift. And we'll, we'll see why in just a moment. All right, let's look at these gifts in detail. First of all, prophecy. What this really has to do with uh, is declaring the word of God. It's really just that simple. Uh, it's, it's, it's used, the motivations of it is to give directions to the church and a declaration. It doesn't, and these gifts, let me clarify, these particular gifts in which Paul is, um, is lining up for us here aren't necessarily... Um, the office, the office gifts, that is, some people, you know, like, I play basketball, but nobody pays me to do it, because that's not my career. Somebody said, right. I'm, I, I could probably beat you, sis, I'm just saying. <laughs> no, but, but yeah, nobody thought me good enough to, to pay me for it. So it's not my profession, is what I'm saying. You know, even if I'm kind of deep. Well, it's not my profession. So, am I a basketball player? Not really as a profession, but I can get out there and play, and I can, you know, win or lose, whatever, right? Well, the gifts work like that also. Some people have a job in the church. Here's what you do. Here's what God has employed you as, and, and that's what you do. And it's generally for uh, the whole church as a whole, giving instruction and direction and leadership to the church as a whole, and that's what their, their job is. So there's a prophet that God will have and give them instruction. And generally the prophet's role uh, will include um, uh, his, his, or his or her need to give instruction for the church for an overall task, something that's bigger than just maybe one person here and there. But anybody can actually prophesy. God can use anybody to prophesy. God can use somebody to declare his word. And even when you begin to praise and worship, God can just start speaking through you or you just begin declaring the, the things of God. Uh, so this prophecy, though, is something, if somebody has the gift here, uh, they probably do it more consistently. So sometimes it's about the consistency of it. God chose that individual, and they'll use that individual more consistently in these particular areas. And the level of faith that person has regarding that thing um, is different than everybody else. Thus, the scripture leading us into all of these gifts, talking about God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. All right? So with this, then, there takes a proportion of faith in order to do it. Uh, you could be talking to someone, God lays on your heart, hey, listen, tell this person this or that. And they'll say, man, that was pretty timely. And that kind of, kind of happens consistently. Well, you know, God is kind of using you in that area to prophesy to individuals. And there may be uh, something specific going on in their life. Even if God doesn't give you all of the details, you just kind of know, you know what, I need to speak this to this individual um, hey, you don't want to do that. You don't want to do that. Hey, here's, you know, God shared this with me. You want to do A, B, and C, okay? And so that's that, that particular gift in operation. Uh, in Romans 12 and 6 is where we found that, but in Acts chapter 19, in verse 6, you'll find some men that Paul met with, and as soon as they got the Holy Ghost, the Bible says in verse 6 of Acts chapter 19, he says they begin to speak in tongues and what? Prophesy. So it wasn't that all of them, all 12 guys just automatically became prophets or sons of the prophets. They just begin to declare the works and the things of God. What they said specifically, the Bible doesn't tell us, but they begin to prophesy. They could have been foretelling, which is what prophecy has to do with sometimes, uh, but it could just simply be God's giving a word or uh, they're glorifying God in a way that's inspired by God. Does that make sense? And so individuals can prophesy. Again, God can use anybody to declare a word, but Generally, these individuals, if they're gifted in that area, um, again, it's a level of faith that they have that's different than others. And they like, look, I know I need to say this to this person. And I know sometimes people are scared to say stuff to people. Well, yeah, I don't know if I'm going to say that to them. Well, now, again, practice. You might be right sometimes. You might be wrong. You know? 
how will I know if I'm right or wrong? Well, probably somebody will tell you. Yeah, he's like, what? Does, do they glow up? Do they do this or that? Because you know what we wait for, for people to cry. Boom, got it. <laughs> so they may tell you in some, some way by the, their expression how they receive it. Or they may tell you, mm-mm, 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 I don't know <laughs> what you're talking about. I don't know what you, what you ate or what have you. And if you're consistently wrong, then you're consistently probably not in this zone. But if you're consistently right, and you say, man, but I never want to be wrong. Well, who cares? I know I'm saying that, but I didn't lay the hand on the lady. <laughs> I probably shouldn't have gave that example earlier. <laughs> now you'll look at me, everything I say. Well, you didn't do that, Brother Lynn. Well, I have done stuff more often than not, but that time I knew that wasn't God. How about that? So anyway, so my point is, is that there's going to be faith that drives this. And of course, faith drives many of these things, but to have to begin to declare the, the word of God to people, it does take a different level of faith. Then secondly, then we have ministry, and we talk about ministers, and people want to get licensed as ministers and so forth, which is a wonderful thing, um, I suppose, um, <laughs> because at the end of the day, all it is is serving people. So, it's, you know, people, oh, you're a minister. Well, that just means I got to serve everybody, whereas you could probably go home. I got to stick around and do this, that, and other. But the drive behind that, though, is the needs of others. And so you're willing to make the sacrifice. Uh, you say, look, here's what I need to do, and I, and I have to sacrifice maybe some things that I need because I have to minister or serve other people. And so all of us, again, can do this, but some people have a drive that says, look, I got to do this. There's some people that, 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 I mean, what time are you, you out praying for somebody at midnight? You're out here doing this at this time of night and all of those things where everybody else say, look, call me tomorrow because you're going to have the same problems tomorrow that you got tonight. Whereas somebody who is uh, propelled by this gift, they're more inclined to, to, to say, you know what, I got to do this right now. There's a push, there's an urge to do that. And that has to be done with patience. I'm a minister, and I do uh, feel inclined to minister and to, to be a servant to individuals. However, I do have my proportion of faith. I go to restaurants, and I see, and I'm going to use them as an example, because Lord bless them, especially a good one. But people that serve at the restaurant, they bring you your food and all of that, the servers, I couldn't be one of them. Not gifted with that. No, sir. Because when I'm doing something, I generally don't like being bothered. So if I'm already taking this person, their stuff, and you're like, excuse me, sir, I'm like, bro. I hit you up when I can, but... I don't, it, it will annoy me fast. It wouldn't, I, I dare fire me fast. Because, you know, I would try it, yes, and eventually you're going to know I'm going to know it. But, man, did not just come by your table? It's like, just wait, you're in line. So, but some folk have a different level of faith and, and this, this anointing on them where they're wanting to care for everybody that's around them. And, oh, yes, oh, I'll be right there. Oh, yes. And they're sincere about it. They're not faking it. They're not saying, oh, well, let me just put on a smile and try to fake it. Yeah, what do you want? No, no, no. They mean it. They have a desire to serve. And, and this gift really is a, is a powerful one to me, again, because probably because there's some elements of it that I lack. But, but because I can certainly see the need for it because there's so many people that have need. And you can see if there's somebody like that, so many people can be blessed in church. How many people in church have needed somebody to serve them and minister them, and, and it takes away from them? Well, all of us, I believe, at some point in time, and people have sacrificed their lives, sacrificed themselves for that very purpose. In Acts chapter 6, verses 1 through 4, there are individuals that, this is where we get the deacons from, but there are individuals that ended up having to go and serve the people because the apostles said, look, we can't do everything. So we need people who have a heart and a willingness to serve. And these people that were chosen to be deacons, they just weren't just some people that they picked. Hey, you, Joe, come in, come in. Because you couldn't just get everybody because they might have picked the limb. And like, what? You see? Or, they, but instead they pick another brother who said, well, let's pray about it. <laughs> let's make sure that we got the right people. That's going to make sure that they're not going to run anybody off. 
because that's their heart. God has given them that, and they chose seven men, and those men were men that God approved of. So, yeah, I gave them a heart for this stuff. And we see even that demonstrated in uh, the life of Stephen, and, and who was, which is uh, one of the, that number. And so uh, there's a particular heart that they have that's absolutely necessary for the church, and we need people who are willing to serve. And so we never look down on it. Well, you know, just no, no, no. We appreciate them, and we should encourage individuals that have that heart because we need them. Not everybody can do it. Secondly, thirdly, are teachers. Teachers. And again, I don't know if this is one that everybody can do. I'm just going to be honest. You know, you want me to be plain with you. Not everybody has uh, the ability, their adroit at teaching. Sometimes, and hopefully, I mean, I, I, I give some kind of help, but Sometimes it may be an individual, they're, they're trying to convey information, and you're, you walk away more confused than you were when you started. Now I'm, now I'm walking backwards. <laughs> At first, you know, I, I shouldn't, well, I better not say it like that. But you ought to walk away from that teaching, uh, understanding the basic principles of what they were teaching. So these individuals typically have uh, an ability to break down complex matters such that it could be really understood by anybody on any level. They can really break it down. So that means they can comprehend it. God gives them the ability to comprehend the scriptures in particular because all these gifts are designed to build the church. So they can look at the scriptures and they can, and I'm not talking about they just come up with something that sounds revelatory. You know, <laughs> sometimes people say stuff and then you read the next verse and you realize, nope, that's not what that means. Um, but individuals who, they, they get, get something out of the Scripture, they can back it up with Scripture. So two things, they study and revelation. It's, it's both. It's not just getting the revelation, but because of the Scriptures, you can get revelation through the Scriptures, and you can back it up with Scripture. But then, after all of that, you can break it down for anybody to really understand. And they walk away, and they're edified by that teaching, and they can practically use the teaching is another part of all of that. Because just to tell me a bunch of Greek words and walk away, and I'm like, I don't know, it's all Greek to me. It makes no, it makes no difference or benefit to my life, but my life ought to be changed in some particular way because you taught that to me, and now I got it, I can use it, it's, it's uh, uh, you know, I can, I, can, I can probably even tell somebody else about it with some enthusiasm because I got it. And they break that down. One great teacher I always mentioned, She's along with us, but um, Sister Dion Carr was a great teacher. We have some great teachers in this church, but she was one, maybe not everybody knows her, but she can break stuff down in, in such a way to where it gave you the ability to say, man, that was pretty good. So when she preached, I was always like, she's going to teach anyway. She might yell a little bit, but she was going to teach, and you're going to be, be edifying. Uh, even if you were a teacher, you'd be blessed by her. Because her ability to break down the word, understand and break down the word of God. In Acts chapter 19 and verse 8, Paul is there. He's talking to some individuals. And the Bible says that he, and it uses these two words, disputing and persuading. But it has to do with reasoning and persuading, which has to do with being able to break down whatever is inaccurate in the minds of an individual and then replace it with what's accurate. So the reasoning are disputing and persuading. So the reasoning... And then persuading. So it's, it's, a, it's a breaking down and a replacement. That's inaccurate because this, this, and this, step by step. Okay, but here's what is accurate according to the word of God. And hear that, how that works. And then they're able to replace it. And, and then that takes patience because not everybody's going to get it right away. Right? Not everybody's going to get it right away. But that teacher also has patience to teach. And then they also know their limitations. Paul says, I believe Titus in one place, he says, they that are heretics uh, without, um, he says, really don't, you know, I'm paraphrasing. He says, don't argue back and forth with them. After the first and second admonition, reject. Just leave them alone. So teachers are patient. They're not getting into an argument with somebody. Well, you know, this is this. And, well, how are we going to represent God? You're about to punch him in the face. Acts 30 is right. Boom. And when you come to, you'll know. Well, no, you can't do that. Teachers recognize I'm making progress, they're getting it, or I also realize that the pushback I'm getting is really a lack of knowing as opposed to 
uh, just a spirit that's just not going to get it. And it's very, you know, I won't say it's very rare, but I've even had maybe one Bible study out of all the years I've taught where one individual, God was like, look, it's just not happening. It doesn't matter what you do. And, and I taught them still a while after that, but eventually I had to tell them, I said, you know what? If that basic principle there, you're going to fight against that. The meaning of the word and the definition is in, in here. You just want to fight against everything. So I said, I tell you what, I'm willing to teach you, but come back to me when you're ready to learn. So sometimes you just have to politely tell people, I'm done. For now. But always be ready and willing to teach. Uh, then next, we have exhortation. The word exhort, or exhortation, is to encourage and to console. Two things here, to encourage individuals. And we absolutely need this in church because there are times where we're not willing to talk about the struggles that we're going through at that moment. But then there's always somebody, a lot of times a mother or a deacon or what have you, I think God blesses them, but it could be anybody. And they'll come and they'll give you a word that encourages you at that moment. And you're, you're, you're lifted up in that moment. You're like, okay, I can make it another mile. I can do it. And the church needs encouragement. Individuals need encouragement. These gifts tend to deal with one-on-one. -on -one. Or it could be a group of people in teaching and so forth. But it has more so to do with encouraging each other and serving and benefiting each other. And so the exhortation to encourage and to console, uh, it, it is, its primary thing is for edification, as I just uh, illustrated or talked about. But also, in my mind, it has to do with warfare. Many times what the enemy would love to do is kick us while we're down or kill us when we're down. If you feel isolated and defeated and nobody cares about you, about you in church, guess who's going to show up? That devil. Well, you know you are a loser. And you failed. And that's why nobody talks to you. And that's why that person walked by you. They didn't say anything. Just send all kind of nonsense to you. But that's when God can send the individual and give some kind of subtle warfare and come in and say, no, no, no. They might not even know why they're telling you what they're telling you. But in that moment, you know God. Watch this. All, all of these gifts have to do with God letting you know that he cares. It may be operating through one of us, but it's God giving that individual the timing, the word, or the deed so that God says, I see you. I see your prayers. I see your tears. I see how you're tired. I see how you're weak. But I got somebody in the church that's going to come to you and they're going to encourage you. They're going to bless you. They're going to talk to you. And it's going to be timely. You're going to say, man, how did you know? Don't even ask. Just say, thank you, Jesus. And thank God for that individual being confident enough to go out and do what they're supposed to do. And so it's all about reestablishing re that saint and getting them to a place where they need to be. Luke 22 and verse 32, Jesus is actually talking here. And he's talking about uh, Peter and his, his struggle or his battle here. And he says, I see that Satan has desired to sift you as wheat. But he says, but I pray that God would encourage you or, 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 or that the Lord, that your faith would fail not. But then he says, and that when you're converted, strengthen the brethren. So he says, well, you know, I'm encouraging you. I want your faith to be uh, in, in strengthened because I know the enemy is coming after you. And so the Lord demonstrates this for us. And we need people who can exhort, people that will be able to uh, recognize, uh, yeah, you know, you, you smiling, but you lying. Because I mean, sometimes I look at people and say, hey, how you doing? Oh, I'm good, liar. And I, I tell you that, you're lying. I see it all over. That's, that's why I asked you how you were doing. Because before you knew I was paying attention, God was paying attention. And God said, they're not doing too well. And so then I say, how you doing? All of a sudden, your face bright up like you at work. Oh, I'm good. You ain't got, I'm not paying you, so just go ahead and be real. I ain't doing too good. Well, yeah, yeah I kind of felt like that. So let's talk about it. Let me let you know that God cares. That God is looking at you and God is concerned. Because it's God trying to get your attention. It's not me trying to be in your business. I got my own problems. <laughs> Amen. And then next, giving. Giving. Giving is a gift also. Uh, obviously, again, all of us can give and God desires for us to give. But then there are individuals that just, I mean, giving is just easy to them. It's just, oh, that's fine. Who said amen? Let me mark you. Take a picture. Amen. When in need, go to brother such and such. 
Now y'all stop amening me on this one now because I shall be asking. <laughs> but, but giving is indeed a, a gift. People just, just man, I, I just know that you need. And here's what drives this gift. Uh, many, just like all the other ones, there's a need um, that individuals have, but it's God letting you know that I'm willing to provide for you. I haven't forgotten you, even in the things that you think aren't important to God. Well, it's, it's about money. It's, well, you need money to eat. God cares about if you're eating. God cares that you're clothed. God cares that you're taken care of here on the earth. And sometimes, watch this, we get into situations where we can't do it for ourselves, but we have a brother or a sister who's capable of doing it also. But these individuals, it's just no matter what the situation is, they're just willing to give. They're not even thinking about themselves. Paul gives a great example in the church in Macedonia, and he brags about them in 2 Corinthians chapters, chapters 8 and 9, and he's using them as an example to the church in Corinth. Hey, he's reminding the church uh, in Corinth, hey, listen, you guys said that you're going to give some money because he's collecting money for uh, the, the, the church in Jerusalem because there was a famine at that time. And he's collecting money for them. So he's going from church to church collecting money. And he, he brags about another church. He says, man, now this church over here, even though they're poor, they're excited to give. He says how that in a great trial of affliction, the abundance of their joy and their deep poverty abounded unto the riches of their liberality. So he says, he says what makes it amazing that they gave the way they gave was the fact that they were also in need. But they desired. The Bible says God loves a cheerful giver in chapter 9. He loves somebody who, in spite of what you're going through, says, you know what? I want to be a blessing to others. I can't stand to see you in a bad situation, and I'm not so concerned about mine. What a heart to have, an individual that's able to do that, that's willing to do that. So when the church even asks for money, it's for the sole purpose of reaching people that are dying and people that are lost. And so to me, giving isn't about, oh, I'm going to be blessed after, I'm, I'm, after I give yeah, you will be, but, or you can be. Not all the time you will be. I believe it's a lot of the heart that you have when you do give. But when you do give, it ought to be because I'm so glad I can benefit the house of God. I want to be able to do that. Because sometimes your flesh isn't going to want to do it, but your heart is compelling you to give. It's pushing you to give because you recognize the needs of others beyond yourself. And so, you know, sometimes there's a sacrifice acts to, you know, from the church. And then there's also simply because you just see it another person. Many times we talk about the church as a whole in terms of giving, but I want to emphasize the biblical teaching also that has to do with giving one to another. Yeah, sometimes we forget about that. Well, I gave a lot to the church, but you just stepped over that guy. That's not the gift of giving. That's not the heart the because when you give, it doesn't matter who you give it to. All right. So, well, I can't give it to them. But if you had a heart to give, you're like, man, let me just give it to you. Let me give you a quick testimony. I'm almost done. I'll give you a quick testimony. So, you know, that's how God sometimes deals with me. I can't say I have a gift of giving. I, you know, but it's not a big deal. I know God has blessed me. One day the Lord says to me, the Lord spoke to me. He said, if you give to the poor, I'll repay you. Then he showed me a scripture in, 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 uh, in Proverbs. He says, I'll repay. I said, all right, lend to the poor, you'll repay. I said, well, <laughs> I'll take you up on that. So that day he, uh, he told me, you know, give to this individual. Um, you know, so I gave to a person, and actually I had preached here a sermon uh, on, a, on a Saturday. They gave me this honorarium, it was like 100 bucks. So I just had $100 in my pocket, and I wasn't rolling like that. You know, I could use that $100, but I threw it in my pocket. Then I was leaving the service. And uh, the Lord spoke to me. He says, there's going to be a guy sitting on the corner reading a Bible. You need to talk to them. I said, okay. So I pull into a 7-Eleven, and I want to get something to drink from there. But I'm looking for somebody sitting on the ground with a Bible. I said, I don't see anybody with a Bible on the ground. And then I realized I really didn't want anything 7-Eleven had. I really prefer Smoothie King because they got the smoothies. It's a difference. So instead, I left there, and I went to Smoothie King. I get in Smoothie King, the only parking space available right in front of the Smoothie King was this one that had a guy sitting there reading a Bible. See, y'all surprised. I wasn't. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, I'm not kidding. I wasn't surprised. I was expecting to see him because that's how God does. So I said, okay, here he is. So I get out of my car. I sit next to him. Hey, how you doing, man? 
uh, hey, how you doing? He started, we talking and so forth and so on. And he's a homeless guy. And, he, and we started talking about the scriptures and so forth. And so I just pulled out my, out the pocket what they gave me. I just gave it to him. He said, oh, thank you. You know, he wasn't excited. I was like, man, you sure you homeless? Uh, <laughs> but, but he took it like, yeah, was, okay, $100, I'll throw it in his pocket. And that was that. We actually had Bible studies on the side of the road for years after that. For a couple of years, I would go and meet him on the side of the road consistently every week because he didn't have anywhere else to go. And we just sat and we did Bible study. So we became friends, actually. And, um, and he came here to church for a little while. Well, don't you know, one day I'm walking and I needed some money big time. The Lord reminded me of this thing. He'll, he'll repay me. Do you know a homeless person came to me one day as I'm walking God says, hey, God told me to give you this. You know how people, in, in the, you don't know what's in their hand, but you really want to know? You'd be acting like, oh, it ain't a big deal, please. <laughs> he, he pulls out, and I, I said, oh, thanks, man, I appreciate it. He, said, he says, the Lord told me to give you that. Homeless guy. Do you know this dude gave me like $1,000? The Lord will repay you, but you got to have a heart. Lord, give me a heart to give. Give me a desire to give to individuals. Amen. I'm running out of time, so I'm just going to mention the next two real quick. Rulers and then, of course, mercy. Um, we won't go to the mercy one because I messed that, that slide up, so I don't even go there. So we'll stop at ruler and I'll talk about mercy. But ruler, this really has to do with any uh, individual that has been given the responsibility to lead and protect the church. When you look at the term here in the Greek, it really has to do with leading and protecting, not just ruling over people as if we're, uh, uh, they're, they belong to us. The Bible says in the book of James, in one place, it says that, be ye not many masters, knowing we receive the greater condemnation. So it's not so much about, and that word really means teachers, they're that masters, but it has more so to do with uh, not lording over individuals because they are God's heritage. So it's really being a steward over the things and the people of God in such a way that we recognize I got to do this as I'm doing it unto the Lord. It's with haste. It's with, uh, with some desire to, to, to build, encourage, and give people uh, tasks in which they're best at doing, organizing and structuring things in such a way uh, that the church can move on, but you're leading and protecting the people of God. And then the last one has to do with mercy. And of course, uh, as it relates, uh, when, when we talk about mercy, um, it is really having the heart wherein we're saying, you know what, um, I'm, I'm going to let that go. I remember Bishop teaching me a long time, not necessarily in a classroom, but sitting in his office. I probably learned more from Bishop sitting in his office than actually sitting in classrooms. And I, I remember it um, more, honestly. But he says, son, we have to err on the side of mercy. He would say that. And it stuck in my mind. And what that has to do with a gift of being able to let things go where other people say, well, no, they, they can't do that. There has to be somebody in the church that stands up and say, we're going to show mercy. How many of y'all needed mercy? Lord knows I probably needed more mercy than everybody in the building, okay? And I needed somebody to be able to say, well, no, we're not going to kill them. We're not going to be mad at them all the time. Barnabas displayed a heart where he, you know, hey, bring in Paul. Because people didn't really like Paul, Paul being Saul killing Christians. But we have to have mercy one with another. But some people have a gift where they can override and overlook things. Just how God has done us, they can do with other individuals. And we can learn from them. And they can instruct us. Deacon Ferguson demonstrated this one time when we were at uh, 109th. And I done folded up my, 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 my phone, so I'm done. But uh, Deacon Ferguson, I remember many years ago, there was a guy acting out up in church and causing problems. And, you know, the young guys were trying to escort them out. And, you know, younger guys, we kind of get rougher with people. Well, they were, not me. I was just, uh, yeah, I was just watching. And, uh, but I was there. And, and Deacon Ferguson comes out and he says, hold on, hold on, hold on said, no, we're not going to do him like that. And we're like, man, this guy about to, you know, he's, he, he, he need a beating. He need to just know not to do that here. Deacon Ferguson came out there, and I'll never forget. It's probably now maybe 18 years ago, but I, 19 years ago. But Deacon Ferguson came out there, and I felt his heart. And it, it convicted me. And so while everybody else went in, I just stood out there and watched how he dealt with the man. And he began to talk to him with love and with kindness. 
In spite of what the man was saying and doing, he did that, and the man was able to come down. And he was able to calm down, and, it, and the situation worked out so much better. So what he did was at least three things. One, he was able to encourage a man who probably would have been discouraged if we would have just kicked him out of the church. That's one. Number two, he showed me, a younger guy, this is how things are supposed to work. I might not necessarily have the gift that he has, but he taught me something on being able to work on myself. These gifts oftentimes, if we don't necessarily have them, but it gives us some idea of here's what the church needs and I need to work on myself in these particular areas. I may, not ever be, may never be gifted in that area, but I could become better in that area. Does that make sense? So let's strive to become better in the areas of these giftings because we ought to serve one another and in so doing we'll be serving God. You can stand. Man, tonight we're closed with prayer, but we're going to be asking God to help us to be able to serve one another. Many times that's not necessarily the prayer that we pray, but it's a prayer that we should pray. We could pray for all types of gifts uh, and, and things, but ultimately the gifts are designed, no matter what it is, to be a service one to another. So I'm going to open up the altars if you so desire. Why don't you come? And if there's a particular gift that you know God has given you and you want to be into operating that gift, I really believe this is the month where we can unlock gifts. I've been praying, God, I don't want to just be talking about gifts and just know some more information. I want us to walk in the gifts. I want us to actually do something. I want to see the dead raised. I want, I want to see blind eyes. I have seen blind eyes open, actually. Um, I prayed for a guy one time and along with another group of folk. God came in blind, went out being able to see. And we tested. Oh, no, I'm sorry. He was deaf, that particular guy. He was deaf, and we had to test him. Well, what, you know, walk, stand behind him and say something. He was able to repeat it because we were surprised. We were amazed. Uh, you know, I prayed, and people got healed instantly. People on their deathbed have ro- rose up in the matter of just moments. The Lord told them, and I told them, this is what God's going to do, and it happened. I've seen them work. And they're amazing, and we ought to desire them. So why don't we come tonight and let's pray and let God help us grow in our gifts, to use our gifts, because I need your gift. Whatever you got, I need it. I need it. And God will bless you for using it. And as God blesses you, you're going to grow, and the devil will be upset about it, but that's what we want. We want the devil mad, and God will be glad. And as you operate in your gift, uh, God will begin to bring people to this church because we have something that other people don't operate in. Not only do we have truth, but we also have the gift of the Spirit in operation. And that's the will of God. Let's go to God now and pray. Lord, we thank you for your mercy and your tender kindness towards us, oh God. Thank you for gifting us, oh God, so greatly. Thank you for loving us so much that you will equip the church with each other, Lord God. Help me to love my brother and to love my sister. Help me to respect the gift that you gave them, oh God. Help me, oh God, to encourage them to use the gift. Help me to know also, Lord God, that this is not a competition. This isn't a battle to show who's more spiritual or who's more powerful. Lord, help me to to, to look at my brother more highly than I look at myself and my sister more highly than I look at myself. Help me to encourage him more than anything else. Help me to look, oh God, for ways that I can be a benefit to the ministry and to my brothers and my sisters and to this world and use my gift. Oh God, I pray for everyone that has come tonight who has a desire to be used by you. Open up their eyes, open up their understanding, oh God, and use them, oh God, mightily, Lord, I pray. Give them gifts, oh God, that will blow their minds, oh God. And I pray, oh God, that they will walk in them, that you will encourage them, that they will also use them not only here in the church, but out in the world, that they may be able to come back with a testimony that somebody was healed right in front of their eyes, in the middle of the supermarket, in the middle of the gym, in the middle of their workplace, oh God that you bring revival because they were willing and their faith level grew to such a a level that they just did what you told them to do at the moment that you told them to do it and revival broke out. Their bosses would get the Holy Ghost. Their co-workers would get the Holy Ghost. People would be amazed because they were able to be used by you. I pray, oh God, that you'll bring, oh God, these testimonies in abundance in this church. And Lord, I know that it will happen. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen.
use anything, Jesus. clap your hands onto the Lord tonight. Thank God for this word. Amen. What a wonderful, wonderful teaching, a wonderful presentation on service gifts. So much that we can take from this lesson tonight and apply it. Amen. We just don't want to be hearers of the word. We want to be doers also. If you're in the house of the Lord, if you've never been baptized in the name of Jesus, the water is ready for you to come now to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. You might have been in another church or another faith tradition and got baptized in the titles tonight is the night you might as well be baptized in that precious name of Jesus God is commanding you to do it make the step to do it amen please bring someone to the house of the Lord this weekend amen bring them to the house of the Lord on Sunday God will fill them with the Holy Ghost amen God will touch their life Saturday we have the training sessions please remember so we want to see you at 6 a.m. Saturday morning for prayer and then we are serving breakfast right afterwards and then the training session at no cost to you. The only cost is your presence. We want you to be there. God bless you. Hug somebody. Greet somebody. Show them that you love them. Amen. Reach out to them. God bless you. Amen. Until we see each other in the house of the Lord.